I have the biggest GPU news in history to share with you guys today. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Wizmac ZK1. The ZK1 is an RGB mechanical keyboard equipped with kale box linear switches, a detachable magnetic palm rest, a 1000 hz pulling rate for maximum speed, and multimedia keys to easily adjust the volume of your PC. The ZK1 is also built with a high quality aluminum frame, and the switches included are rated for an incredible 80 million clicks of durability. Not only that, but it's incredibly customizable, allowing you to replace each individual key and set different lighting profiles for the keys as well as the RGB bar below to match your setup. So if you're looking for a high quality and affordable mechanical keyboard, be sure to click the link in the description below. That's right, today's an absolutely monumental day because for the first time in a very long time, we have a third player in the GPU market once again. And yes, this is very, very exciting, guys. We finally have Intel entering the GPU market officially today with their brand new release GPUs. And we'll get into those in just a little bit. But first, I just want to stress to you guys how exciting this day is because for a very long time, we've had basically a duopoly going on between AMD and Nvidia when it comes to the GPU space. And although these two companies do technically compete with each other, honestly, I don't think they've been doing a very good job as of late. Now, the next generation of GPUs, it does look like things are starting to pick up pretty significantly. But for a little while here, I've definitely noticed that between AMD and Nvidia, they don't seem to be competing on price very well. They just seem to be increasing prices every single generation and things are getting to a point where it's just absolutely ridiculous and I do expect that Intel entering the market is just going to apply additional pressure so even if you are someone who's not interested in Intel graphics you should just be honestly really happy that they're entering the market because it's just going to make all those other graphics cards go down in price even further but with all that stuff out of the way let's go ahead and take a look at what Intel actually released today because yes it is very very exciting stuff now starting off with their lowest end entry level GPU the A350M and by the way all the GPUs that we're going to be taking a look at today for the most part are going to be on the laptop as the laptop GPUs are going to be releasing first. However, they are going to be followed up by desktop variants that are going to be based off of the same GPUs as far as I'm aware. So this stuff should basically be exactly what we're going to see on the desktop, except for on the desktop, they're just going to be a little bit higher clock. So once again, starting off with the A350M, this thing is apparently going to have six XE cores, six ray tracing units, 1150 megahertz for the core clock, four gigabytes of G6, a memory bus of 64 bit and a graphics power of up to 35 watts now moving on to the a370m and this is where things start to get a little bit more exciting this one's gonna have eight xe cores eight ray tracing units a clock speed of up to 1550 megahertz which by the way on the desktop i actually am expecting these things to exceed two gigahertz so they're going to be much much faster on the desktop it's gonna have the same four gigabytes of g6 memory on the same 64 bit bus except for a slightly higher power limit of 50 watts now these are gonna actually be available starting now but the other SKUs that we're going to be talking about here in just a second are going to be available in early summer along with the desktop variants as well and that could be just as little as about two months away so yeah in not too long we will be talking about Intel's desktop graphics cards and just how much they're going to be comparing to cards like the RTX 3070 but again moving on to the next GPU and this is going to be the A550M kind of more of the mid-range GPU it's going to have 16 XE cores so double the one that we just talked about 16 ray tracing units a clock speed of only 900 megahertz with 8 gigabytes of G6 on a 128 bit bus with up to 80 watts of power drive and moving on to the big boys here now we're talking about the a730m which is going to have up to 24 XE cores 24 ray tracing units 1100 megahertz for the core clock 12 gigabytes of G6 memory on a 192 bit bus at 120 watts of power and then finally the biggest GPU that they're going to be producing the a770m now this thing is going to have 32 XE cores 32 ray tracing units 1650 megahertz for the clock speed with up to 16 gigabytes of G6 memory on the 256 bit bus with up to 150 watts of power. Now this stuff is really, really exciting guys because especially that last graphics card, if we do go ahead and take a look at what it's gonna look like on the desktop, like I mentioned, it's gonna have over two gigahertz for a clock speed. So you're gonna see a massive improvement there. But on top of that, if we take a look at the specs, this is gonna be the one with 512 execution units, the one that's gonna have 4,096 shaders. And yes, this is gonna be the card that's going to be competing with stuff like the RTX 3060 Ti or even possibly the RTX 3070. So this is going to be the one that I think a lot of gamers are going to be interested in and it's just going to all come down to price. Now I'm not going to give my speculation on price on all of the SKUs but for the top end SKU guys here I am expecting a price around 400 US dollars. Now it could be even cheaper than 400 dollars which would be absolutely insane but the reason why I say 400 dollars is because by the time this is actually purchasable which should 
be hopefully in the next couple of months here well honestly at that point in time the RTX 3060 Ti should be a little bit closer to its MSRP which if you remember is $400 now if this card gives you the same performance as an RTX 3060 Ti it has great rendering performance uh, because Intel does have a long history of doing stuff like that and it also has its XCSS type of upscaling well honestly if it's giving you the same performance why not charge the same price because you're getting double the amount of memory so you are going to be getting more value out of this Intel graphics card and I think that's what they're going to heavily lean into and I think that makes a lot of sense so now we've gone over all the specs we've talked about pricing but what about performance and here's where things get a little bit interesting now you have my thoughts on where you know the top end SKU is probably going to land in terms of its performance but to give you an idea of some actual performance numbers that they put out here we can take a look at the A370M once again which mind you this is the second slowest card that they're going to be putting out there but it's the only card we have official benchmarks for and they did go ahead and compare it to their Intel Iris X I believe integrated graphics on the Intel Core i7 1280p now those integrated graphics are actually pretty fast if I recall correctly however if we take a look at their charts here the A370M which once again this is their second slowest graphics card that they are making it is like a fourth the specs of what you're going to be seeing on their top end GPU and running at about half the clock speed so we could be talking about a GPU that's like one eighth as powerful on paper in terms of its actual FP32 performance than the actual top end GPU that you're going to be seeing on the desktop and even with that being said it's absolutely destroying the Intel Iris X graphics I mean if we take a look here uh, the Intel Iris X is not able to achieve 60 FPS at 1080p in any of these games whereas the A370M has no issue whatsoever doing so so it's honestly doing a much much better job here and if we go ahead and we talk about competitive frame rates on their next slide here we can see once again the Intel Iris X is struggling to hit over 90 FPS whereas this card it's having no issues whatsoever breaking well past that now moving on to stuff like creator workloads you can see here yet again another slide where yeah you know what the Intel Iris X not too bad for integrated graphics but once again Intel's second slowest GPU that they're gonna be producing can be up to 2.4 times faster after in these key workloads. I mean, that is some really impressive stuff here, guys. So there you go. We've talked about the specs, we've talked about the price, and we've talked about the performance of Intel's upcoming graphics. And honestly, it's actually looking a little bit more impressive than I was originally thinking. So I can't wait to see these graphics cards out of Intel, as well as their next generation graphics cards, which should be coming uh, not too long after these release as well. So if you want to stay up to date on all these various Intel GPUs that are going to be releasing, make sure you hit that subscribe button, because I'm going to be trying my best to source one on launch day to go ahead and give you guys some reviews some really unbiased reviews that are going to be showing you you know exactly what type of performance you can be seeing out of it as well as is it going to be stable you know is it going to be good for streaming is it going to be good for you know recording stuff all this sort of stuff i'm going to be trying to go ahead and cover so make sure you subscribe for that but with all that stuff out of the way yeah i i'm honestly just super super hyped for a third competitor to finally be entering the market and i cannot wait once again to get my hands on these gpus but hey that's just what i think what do you think about intel and their upcoming arc gpus let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.